<laughs> Happy Halloween. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello, denizens of the Empire. It's Jabari here. In the last presentation, I'm sure you're probably wondering where this mask comes from. And if not, well, you're gonna find out anyway if you watch this one. So, in the spirit of Halloween, I decided that I'll cover a topic that is probably the closest thing to Halloween that you will get from pre-colonial Africa. Dressing up in costumes and masks in a culture built entirely around the dead and their ghosts. Yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up, don't you think? So first I'd like to give a special thanks and shout out to Red Spirit Mask for helping me out with some of the sources for this video. And I'm sure you could tell by his namesake that this is the primary focus of his channel and not just the masks either, but the various cultures, art, and architectural forms found throughout the African continent. He's a very intelligent guy, you should definitely check him out if you want more content like this. So what we'll be covering in today's video is a secret society of West Africa that encompasses several ethnic groups of Southeastern Nigeria and Cameroon. Today we'll be focusing primarily on the Ibibio, and the collective widely encompassing society is called the Ekpo. The name Ekpo literally translates to ghost or masked ghost and denotes its members, whom which are exclusively men. All of the ancestors of the living retain an important role in the everyday lives of their surviving kin. In Ekpo society, ghosts are believed to control the fortunes of their living descendants and any disrespect to them or ignoring of offerings or kinship norms can result in misfortune. Simply put, if you ignore or disrespect the ghosts of your dead ancestors, then they'll haunt you. Seems fair enough. Naturally, with such an integral role in the lives and society of these various peoples, the Ekpo were both feared and revered as they retained both religious as well as practical hierarchical status in society. In fact, one could draw a loose analogy between the Ekpo society and the Knights Templar or Teutonic Order of Medieval Europe. Even after colonial administration, Reverend Hodgett said the following about Ekpo in 1927. There still exists a powerful society known as Ekpo society. It is a society which is silently but powerfully wielding a tremendous influence over the lives of the unsophisticated heathens. Its word is law and its commands with all sacrosanctity that surround its members dare not be disobeyed. Even as late as the 1950s, Eva Watt noted that the Ekpo still wielded strong influence. Although the presence of the British government has to some extent checked their gross outrages, yet this order Ekpo still exerts considerable power. More recently still, in the year 1983, or a full 23 years after Nigeria gained its independence from the British Empire, the Ekpo continued to wield tremendous power and enforce its laws on their own terms, and continue to do so to present. So enough about that. Where do the creepy masks come into play? Well, as noted earlier, the Ekpo society is based entirely around the ancestors and their ghosts. Members of the society wear their masks, raffia capes, among other body adornments that impersonate the ancestors and are intentionally made to look scary to instill both fear and respect amongst non-initiates. Supposedly, the Ekpo society members live in the forest among ghosts of their ancestors. These forests are allowed to be entered only by men and any women who disobey this law are severely punished. The Ekpo paint their hands and legs with charcoal and hold machetes or bows and arrows. In addition to looking downright scary, they enforce the belief that disobedience to the ancestors can cause infertility in women and death of children, no male children, illness, and other misfortunate events. The Ekpo masqueraders act at a village level and can interact with one another in initiation rites, but offerings cannot be shared between villages. Additionally, masks must be crafted and worn within the parameters of the respective rank. Among these ranks are the Nioho, Ayara, Iyun, Ekon Ekpo, and Inan Ekpo. It is illegal for non-initiates of Ekpo to wear or even own a mask. The only exception to this rule is on Ekpo Parade Day when children and parents of Ekpo are allowed to wear masks. 
women are able to attain a rank that allows them to own masks, or specifically, a crested mask. Despite ownership, however, their masks are still only allowed to be worn by men. Women of this rank are called Okapella, or dead mothers, and even after they die, their masks are passed on and worn and danced by Ekpo men to commemorate the lives they lived and the value that they held in society. Raffia cloth production is also exclusively a male duty, and any woman caught entering areas of Raffia cloth production could be beheaded on sight. Fortunately today, however, it only results in a heavy fine. After the cloth is woven, it is then passed on to women to create garments. Some masks are composed entirely of Raffia cloth only, but the rank of Ayara must have a mask carved out of wood by an expert. The wooden masks are referred to as Iso Ikpo, or Face of Ikpo. The carvers are paid for their services, typically after a hard bargain, and facial measurements of the buyer. The buyer gives the carver very specific details and specifications of how they want their masks to look. After the fee is paid, it is also customary to give the carver a rooster and a bottle of Ufofolp, a West African liquor refined from palm wine. As with many other West African religions, sacrifice and libations play a key role, which is what the two latter gifts are used for upon the completion of the mask in order to appease the spirits that inhabit the mask as well as bring blessings or just a big thanks to the spirit that protects the carver, which the Ikpo call Ndim Uso or Obot Uso. The same libation is also offered after Rafia cloth is produced. Interestingly, despite all of these lesser spirits and strong emphasis on worship of ancestor ghosts, the Ibibio are monotheistic, worshipping a supreme being who rules over the physical and spiritual universes, and all of the souls that inhabit each realm. They refer to this supreme god as Abasi. So anyway, back on the masks. Not all Ekpo masks are ugly or scary looking, and in fact, they tend to have two distinct categories. The Mfun Ekpo is a mask worn during the day. It has delicate features including a small high nose, thin lips, pointed chin, and a high forehead. They usually tend to have bright and vibrant colors like red, green, yellow, and white and are used to represent the gods of those of high morality who led good lives prior to their deaths. The second category of masks are the more creepy looking ones. This type is worn during the night and is known as Idiok Ekpo. They have rough and ugly features and are painted black, brown, and blue. As you can imagine, they represent the opposite of the aforementioned Mfon Ekpo, personifying the ghosts of evil people who led immoral lives. So, as I said at the beginning, this is pretty much an authentic African Halloween, albeit an integral part of the ways of life and culture of the people, rather than a time to just dress up and get free candy. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you did, please drop me a comment, like, and a subscribe if you want more videos like these. For sources, check out my website, linked below. If you'd like to support future projects, you can do so there as well, or by clicking the join button below, or by becoming a patron. I hope you all enjoyed the video, thanks for watching as usual, and always remember, we don't come from nothing.